Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to So That Just Happened, a podcast for those who have lost their person and want to find themselves. I'm Carly Cooper, a single mom, widow, coach, author, and chronic truth seeker. My superpower is finding the funny, the hope, and the silver lining in any shit situation. This podcast is for the purpose of education only and is not a replacement for therapy. If you need additional support, please seek out a trained professional for help with your specific situation. Let's get to it, shall we? Hello, and welcome to this week's episode called How Carly Got Her Groove Back. Yes, this is the episode where I share how I got back into the dating scene after 27 years of being out of the dating scene. And by dating scene, I mean feeling super resistant, closed off, and completely anxious about the idea of talking to strange men. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let me paint a picture for you. The last time I went on a date, it was 1994. At that time, if you had a question about something you needed to research the answer on microfiche or dust off your old Encyclopedia Britannica. If you wanted to talk to someone, you either had to call them on a landline or speak with them face to face. The horror. The Rachel haircut was all the rage and a blackberry was still just a fruit. If you're a listener who doesn't know what I'm referring to here, let me say it this way. The last time I went on a date, you likely weren't born yet. So the mere idea of getting back out there after 27 years of being with the same person and navigating dating in a completely different world was a terrifying thought. Let's also add to the mix that I'm an introvert and I love being home. Sweatpants and a hoodie are my power suit and small talk is my kryptonite. The idea of getting root canal felt more appealing to me than creating a profile for a dating app. At least with a root canal, I can have the nitrous oxide. Clearly, I needed help in this department. Now, I didn't even contemplate the idea of dating for at least eight or nine months after my husband died. And even then, it was an idea that was planted in my head by my coach. More like a social experiment a way for me to get back out there and start talking to men again. As resistant as I was to the idea of dating again, I often had the thought that I felt too young to be single for the rest of my life, but also too old to start over. But if I were to really drill that down, it was more about fear. Fear of getting back out there. The risk of bringing down the walls that I meticulously built in order to protect my wounded heart. The fear of getting attached and potentially hurt again. The fear of stranger danger. The fear of being catfished. And the immense dread of having to wear an underwire bra again. I mean, don't we all just smile a little brighter when we're wearing a sports bra? Am I right, ladies? I got really good at being on my own. Even when I was married. Mark was a camp director, so he was gone for about four months of every year. When many couples celebrated the freedom of having their kids go off to camp or they could enjoy the lazy days that summer would bring as a family, I had to find ways to occupy my time and create my own joyful experiences. For many summers in the beginning, it was really hard and lonely. But I nurtured my friendships and found different creative outlets to occupy my time and feed my soul. Over time, my solo summers became a blessing, something I looked forward to, something that many of my friends kind of envied. I learned that it was up to me to create my own happiness, that I couldn't rely on or expect anyone else to fill the void. So as the years went on, I looked forward to my alone time. I made the best of it and valued it as a way for me to reconnect with myself, to do things that were just for me. And in a strange way, It was almost like a dress rehearsal for how my life would actually turn out after Mark died. But what I realized after I got more clear about my fears and resistance around dating was just because I was good at being alone 
didn't mean I wanted to be. And the best part about feeling like I was capable to be on my own was that I could approach dating on my terms. I wasn't desperate to find anyone. I didn't feel the need to settle because I was afraid to be alone. Over the years, I built up this great social network of amazing friends, and I had creative outlets to fill my time, and I felt like I could always have plans if I wanted them. And that may sound lucky, and I'm super grateful for all that. But I created it. I nurtured it, and I continue to do so to this day. But I also saw the value in finding my person, in having a permanent weekend date and a consistent emergency contact. My son will potentially be going off to university in a year, and I felt like it would be an easier transition for me if I could enjoy that new freedom with a special someone rather than feeling sad or like an empty nester at the age of 50. So my coach and I got to work. Before I could even begin to put myself back out there, I needed to do a lot of healing first. My heart had been shattered. We had to unpack my emotional baggage, work on past and present traumas by doing some womb healing. Yep, it goes that far back for all of us, my friends. And also because of my years of studying and teaching about the law of attraction, I knew that whatever energy I put out is what I'd attract back. So if I was feeling resistant, insecure, or closed off, I'd attract men who matched this energy, or they weren't going to be emotionally available to me. I knew that before I was really going to be ready to meet my person, I had to work on getting me back to a better place, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and energetically. So after the bulk of that kind of healing was done, it was then time for me to get on the apps. Ugh, even thinking about this still makes my stomach turn. But I sucked it up and I tried. And I chose two popular apps to start with. You know, just to look and see what was out there. And all I can say is, oi. My coach reminded me very often, because I had regular moments of panic, that my intention behind me going on these apps wasn't to find the one. She had to constantly tell me to take the pressure off. I was just there to learn how to talk to men again and receive compliments, which was incredibly hard for me to do. Not only because it's hard for me to receive, but also because I had just watched the Tinder swindler and my bullshit detector was set to 11. So basically, none of the men I was talking to really stood a chance of cracking this tough nut. But I approach the dating apps in the same way I do most uncomfortable things, with a lot of dread and my guard up. But I show up and do the best I can at that moment. So I swiped left a lot more than I swiped right, but I did challenge myself from time to time if I felt there was a glimmer of something positive, all while reminding myself that I was here only to make conversation. Now, I did have some witty banter with a few brave souls who picked up what I was putting down. They got my sarcasm, my references. They seemed nice enough. But the moment I was asked to continue the conversation over text or phone, I shut that shit down. I just wasn't ready. I felt I made some positive strides, though. I put myself out there, challenged myself to stay in the conversation even when I knew it wouldn't lead to anything, and I was always honest and respectful to the person I was talking with. But it just became too stressful, something I dreaded. And again, I knew I'd never meet the right person with that kind of energy behind me. So I deleted the apps. And then I decided to take a different approach. One that energetically felt more aligned with me. I began to manifest my man. Now, instead of only writing down how I wanted him to look or be, I focused on how I wanted to feel in this new relationship. And I wrote it in the present tense as if I was already experiencing this connection. Here's exactly what I wrote. He's smart, witty, funny. He gets it. He's attractive and fit and tall. We are spiritually connected. And this relationship makes me feel safe 
comfortable. It's easy and fun. I feel secure. It's mutually respectful, loving, kind, nurturing, caring, protective, exclusive. I feel giddy. It's exciting. I feel connected and cozy. And it's romantic and passionate. Thank you. I read this over and over again. I even created an ideal relationship vision board that I played on my phone every day. I observed healthy relationships around me. Now, I didn't obsess over this. I just thought about it from time to time. When I walked my dog in the morning, I would speak out loud about how I wanted to feel in this new relationship. I would listen to love songs and pretend Ed Sheeran was singing about me. And when it felt as if nothing was happening, I reminded myself that unless I planned to date someone 48 years younger than me, he was out there right now. We were both just getting ready to meet each other at the right and perfect time. I allowed all that to marinate and continued to carry on doing my thing. Then, one late afternoon at the end of June in 2022, my friend and I were deciding if we were going to get together at her place that night. To be honest, I was feeling kind of lazy. I was in sweats and had committed to staying in, ordering dinner, and watching a show on my iPad while I worked on my jigsaw puzzle. Now, to some of you, that may sound totally depressing. This is actually my ideal kind of night. But in the end, I pushed myself and decided to go to her house. A little human interaction with a close friend would be good for me. So we were chatting it up and catching up, and she was telling me about her current relationship, which seemed like it was coming to an end. And at that point, she had been divorced for about a year, and she was actually pretty active on the apps, going out on dates and very open to meeting new people. I was really impressed with her and really didn't understand why she found any of it enjoyable while I found the whole process painfully uncomfortable. But here was one major difference. She ended her marriage and felt unhappy for years, even while she was married. So by the time she actually left her husband, she was chomping at the bit for a new romantic connection. My marriage was happy, but it ended abruptly and without warning. Now, I'm not implying that going through a divorce is easy at all, even if you're the one leaving. The end of a relationship is hard and painful, however it happens. She was just in a different headspace than I was, about the whole dating process. Back to us sitting on her couch. We were scrolling Facebook on our phones for some reason I can't remember. And then that's when I noticed the heart symbol at the bottom of my Facebook feed. You know where the notifications are? I'd never seen this before and it said the word dating. Who knew Facebook had a dating app? I was curious, so I clicked on it. Now, in order to see what it's all about, you have to put in some information about yourself. Basically, I was creating a profile and I didn't even realize it. I mean, I actually put effort into the last dating profile I did. I intentionally chose pictures I felt pretty good about. I carefully crafted my answers to try and represent my witty self. But for the Facebook profile, I basically used the latest picture taken on my camera roll and I don't even remember answering any prompt questions. I really didn't think I was actually putting a profile together, but sure enough, I was. And within 10 minutes, I matched with someone. Now, the good thing about the Facebook dating app, it's it's like Facebook, where it shows you who your mutual friends are. So that helps with the vetting process. And this guy I matched with was friends with a good friend of mine. Now, to be clear, I don't really know why I decided to match with him. I didn't feel majorly drawn to him based on his profile. I was just sort of neutral at first. And given all the resistance I felt at my last attempt at dating apps, neutral was actually a really good place to start. Before we started chatting, I reached out to this mutual friend. I wanted some intel to ensure he wasn't a Jeffrey Dahmer kind of charming and was actually worthy of my time. She assured me he was a good guy and so I decided to be open enough to explore this potential new connection. And by open, I mean still extremely cautious and hesitant, but willing to respond. I made a promise to myself. 
I was going to stay true to myself, be 100% honest and transparent when necessary, and settle for nothing less than I feel I deserve. But if things felt good, I would continue to show up and be vulnerable even if I felt scared. This was put to the test almost immediately. After our initial introduction texts, he wrote, I think you're very attractive. And immediately, I felt my walls go up. My knee-jerk reaction was to shut this down, to think, oh, here we go, another douchebag who is just after one thing. But I stopped myself from wanting to give a smart-ass reply, and instead, I took a moment to breathe and recenter. Then I thought, wait, don't I want to be with someone who finds me attractive? Of course I do. Is it nice to receive that compliment? Sure is, especially at my age. Have I felt any douchebag vibes up until this point? Nope. Okay, then let's proceed with caution. I decided to graciously accept his compliment by saying, thank you. And then I cut to the chase. I wrote, what are you looking for in this connection? I mean, why not just put it right out there? If he said a casual relationship or a hookup or something along those lines, okay then, house lights on and scene. Not for me. But instead of wondering or feeling anxious about our exchanges and thinking, is there innuendo here? I decided to hear it from him. And his response was honest, clear, concise, and very much aligned with what I was looking for too. Okay. Level two of this dating game has been conquered. At first, we kept our communication safe on the Facebook app. But slowly throughout the week, we Facebook friended each other, moved to Messenger. Then we exchanged numbers and started texting. Then we spoke on the phone. All of this was very nerve-wracking for me. Even though I felt we had a deep connection and we had a ton in common, and we both valued truth and honesty, this was all still very new and scary. I was anxious the whole time. I could barely eat and was constantly needing to apply deodorant. But I felt grateful and really proud of myself that I was able to express to him how I was feeling, and he respected my timing, my process, and my anxiety about it all. I'm happy to report at the time of this recording, I've been with this amazing guy for seven and a half months. There have been some incredible moments and also some really challenging ones, but we have navigated our way through them all and are stronger for it. So whether you're a widow or divorced, the idea of being in a new relationship or starting over can feel scary and daunting. Being with someone new, even when they are amazing, will shine a light on old wounds that still need healing. Being with the right person is more than just enjoying movies together, laughing at the same jokes, or even sharing similar values. You have to feel safe enough to speak up for yourself when things don't feel right, to communicate your needs in a healthy, mature way that allows you to feel seen and heard to be willing to continue to do the work when old patterns or wounds reveal themselves, and to grow and evolve together as a partnership. And you have to allow space for your partner to do the same, because at this stage of our lives, everyone comes with some kind of baggage. I have done my best to honor my marriage and my relationship with Mark and keep certain things about it sacred. And I will never compare my current relationship or boyfriend to Mark or my marriage. That was my past, a different time and a different version of me. I got a second chance at life and love that I didn't ask for, but have come to a place where I am graciously accepting it with an open mind and an open heart. And it's been an incredibly rewarding experience so far. I feel very grateful for where I am right now and for the relationship I'm in. And while it may seem to others like I lucked out because I met my ideal match in just 10 minutes, I assure you, he came to me at the right and perfect time because we were both ready to receive each other. I had done a lot of work and healing to get to this place of being ready. But then the next phase of the work began after I met my boyfriend. It really never ends. We are a constant work in progress 
and it's often a dance of one step forward and two steps back. But if you commit to dating yourself first, loving yourself first, advocating for yourself and getting super clear about what you value most and stick to it, you won't need another person to complete you. They will just be a super lucky participant who gets to enjoy the ride beside you. Thank you for spending this time with me. I'll see you in the next episode. All right, my friends. Thank you so much for listening to this So That Just Happened podcast. I really hope you found value in this episode and that you're walking away with at least one golden nugget that you can implement or feel inspired by. I would be so grateful if you would share it with one friend or family member who is committed to moving forward and transforming their life. Make sure you subscribe so you can catch every new episode and please leave me a review. It would mean so much to me. Also, follow me on Facebook and Instagram at at Coach Carly. Thanks again for listening and I'll see you in the next episode.